And I'm talking from a capital framework, both a regulatory as well as the economic capital. So understanding the reason why banks require capital. So the reasons can be many for Firstly, it could be increase of business because a bank would always like to have additional capital if it, to, if it has to explore additional business opportunities. Next is definitely from a regulatory perspective because regulators expect banks to allocate or earmark certain portion of their capital for uh, risk purposes. So that's mainly in sync with the capital adequacy guidelines. And other related concept can be an economic capital, something which we discuss as well. So economic capital is something other than or over and above the regulatory capital which the banks uh, generally put aside. And of course, uh, everyone prefers a bank which is well capitalized. The reason is uh, there can be market stresses which can build up. And those banks who have ample amount of capital, they always fare well whenever the market is in stress, be it uh, from, from various reasons. So it could either be from some event, which has a major event which has happened in the market or due to any other scenario. But any firm which is well capitalized will always thrive and, and will survive over any kind of stress, stresses. That is the robustness of that firm gets tested and uh, capital is something which gets dear in terms of market stresses. So whenever uh, any firm or any bank who has ample amount of funds uh, uh, with itself will find itself better positioned to, uh, to make up for any kind of uh, difficult times which the market poses. Now let's bifurcate the capital requirements into two parts. One is regulatory and other is economic. Now regulatory capital is something which is expected as per regulatory guidelines. So we have the Basel Committee of Banking Supervision who has uh, come up with regulatory guidelines which are adopted by regulators around the globe. So what regulators globally do is they pick up the base guideline from uh, BCBS and then they tweak that guideline in order to make it uh, 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 to make it more relevant to the uh, to their particular jurisdiction or their particular economy so uh, this specifies the amount of capital which bank needs to keep aside uh, in uh, to be in sync with the regulatory requirements and this is like a minimum capital requirement so every bank has to ensure that every day it has that much amount of capital which is put aside uh, in order to meet the regulatory requirements there simply cannot be a breach on the regulatory capital side it's unacceptable and that's why regulators expect banks to calculate their capital charge on a daily basis so capital charge gives an idea of uh, how much amount of capital a bank needs to keep keep aside so that is a calculation which banks do on a daily basis so this is what we call as regulatory capital then this is the capital which will ensure that the bank will remain as a going concern because as we know banks are allowed to add risk onto their books so uh, look at a trading book for instance so whenever the front office in a bank starts transacting in various uh, products imagine derivatives products or even fixed income or fx whenever they are adding positions onto their portfolios they are adding a risk on their book and in order to uh, in order to handle that risk ample amount of capital that is a commensurate amount of capital needs to be uh, kept aside or earmarked because of the risk which has been added to the books and this is what we call as regulatory capital and this is the capital which can help ensure that the bank remains as a going concern and it remains liquid in the long term then uh, here is the point on liquidity which i just mentioned because bank has both short term as well as long term requirements so a well capitalized bank will find it uh, easy to enter to meet all of its short term as well as long term liquidity requirements now regulatory capital generally looks at market risk credit risk and operational risk now let's understand economic capital now economic capital is different than regulatory capital and this is based on internal models which a bank develops so there is no separate regulatory guideline as such which will uh, decide what should be the kind of economic capital but uh, this depends on the market on the bank's know-how of the industry and also the kind of risk which it perceives and for that they require internal models because internal models will uh, take into consideration all of the points which the bank has analyzed over a period of time and also what what is the firm's thinking that is if the bank believes that going ahead uh, these are the times whereby there may be stresses or these are these may be certain uh, estimations about 
potential market stresses which can build up for that it may want to allocate some additional capital which which we call as inter uh, call as economic capital which comes from internal models now uh, regulators have a say as to the kind of assets which can be used for economic capital so which assets can be earmarked for meeting the economic capital uh, idea of the bank that is something which will be specified by the regulators generally economic capital will be allocated across individual business units because as we know every bank has different uh, business units so business units could be uh, investment banking it could be primary dealerships it could be corporate banking etc retail banking etc now each of these business units will be allocated a certain amount of economic capital and the idea is economic capital will help the bank measure the performance of individual units on a risk adjusted basis so that's a big advantage of economic capital so rather than from a capital perspective uh, regulators look at economic capital as a measure of risk uh, which the bank is trying to address and whenever we study economic capital in addition to the three basic types of risks market credit and operational risk other types of risks are also studied which is liquidity risk then the core business risk for a bank and the diversification benefits as well so these things get combined together whenever we are trying to uh, calculate the economic capital for an uh, enterprise or for a bank now economic capital may be more or less than the regulatory capital now there are two important concepts which we study when we talk of economic capital one is expected loss and other is the confidence level so there is a small chart which shows a relationship between these two items so there are so if we focus on the graph here uh, there are two lines given one which talks about expected loss and other which talks about the confidence level so expected loss is the kind of loss which the bank uh, estimates will happen uh, over a certain time horizon and this is something which gets uh, which gets calculated or expected loss is something which is factored in whenever the operating income is uh, calculated that is the it is adjusted against the operating income now beyond this there may be certain unexpected losses which the bank will be uh, exposed to because finally whenever a bank is trying to estimate how much is the potential loss which is which it will be exposed to it's an estimate or it's the best estimate which the uh, bank's management is trying to do anything uh, on top of that expected loss is what we call as an unexpected loss so that is something which we try to address through the economic capital idea and there is a confidence interval which is defined so the confidence level uh, which the management defines is defined as the point up to which we expect the bank to continue as a going concern and the gap between these two uh, pointers is what we call as the economic capital now a few uses of economic capital are evaluation of capital adequacy so yes uh, a bank needs to be robust enough so that it can handle both uh, expected as well as unexpected losses which will improve the overall stability of the bank then developing risk adjusted performance measures as we earlier discussed we allocate economic capital across individual business units in the bank and in order to measure the performance of the individual business units this is an excellent metric so that way we get to know what is the risk adjusted performance for every uh, business unit of the bank and it enhances the risk framework so as we know that a well capitalized bank is going to enhance the overall stability of the bank and whenever bank starts uh, starts focusing on these nitty gritties something in addition to the regulatory capital that naturally enhances the overall risk infrastructure and that is something which regulators expect banks to do as well because banks are important entities within any economy or within any market and stability of the banking industry is predominant because it's uh, it's a very because uh, finally every economic activity which happens it, banking industry is somewhere related to that so in case something goes wrong in the banking industry then it has large scale repercussions something which we had seen in the 2008 global financial crisis as well so when the financial uh, or the bfs industry as we call it or bfsi industry that ran into problems in the entire economy globally that ran into problems so that's why stability of banks is immensely important and in order to ensure that bank remains stable we need to have a very very robust and an enhanced risk framework to handle all of these uh, difficulties which may come up in the near future